I have recently started listening to Matthew Perry's memoir. It's an audio book called Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing. It's been a really interesting experience because, unfortunately, as most of you know, he has recently passed away. I would like to invite you to join this conversation that I'm about to have now with Xenia, where I talk a little bit more about my experience listening to his memoir, and also we're going to teach you some nice vocabulary. Actually, recently I've started listening to Matthew Perry's audio book. It's his memoir, and it's been really, really enlightening. It's been interesting and it's been enjoyable to listen to himself chronicling or sharing some experiences that he had in his life. Um, I think I'm not alone in saying that I was, to say the least, shocked when I heard of his passing. And I learned that he published his memoir just one year prior to his passing. It was in 2022. It was super recent. And the cool thing about uh, his memoir is that he narrates it himself. So you can actually hear so him yeah. narrating experiences that he had in his life. I haven't gotten really far in the book yet, but for example, the prologue alone is so captivating, is so compelling mm -hmm. and gripping. He starts the book talking about uh, an experience, a near death experience that he had, and he had to be rushed to the hospital And then he had some complications there at the hospital. He slipped into a coma. Mm -hmm. And then he, it would take months for him to recover. But listening to him detailing that experience was so captivating because it was really visual, descriptive. And he was an actor and a comedian. So he also used a little bit of humor here and there in the way that he would describe this terrible situation. There was a little bit of sarcasm here and there or the way he would explain something mm -hmm. uh, because, I know, he was a, a funny guy. I've been really enjoying it, uh, listening to his uh, memoir. Did you get any, I don't know, eerie feeling while listening to the guy when he, you know, when you know that he just passed away? First of all, that is a great word. What is an eerie feeling kind of you feel fear because of some mysterious i don't know goosebumps right uh, it's mm -hmm. something out i would say out of this world fear mm -hmm. of something maybe of even unknown. a little bit unknown mysterious or mm -hmm. scary even mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. an eerie feel because he has recently just passed away and then you are listening to him right mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a year ago yeah, uh, yeah. chronicling that you know one thing I, i realized was that as many other english teachers I've always been a, a huge fan of Friends, and Chandler Bing was always my favorite character because yeah. he was so funny, witty, I loved his sarcasm. But then uh, after learning about Matthew's passing recently, I realized that that's all I knew about him. Mm -hmm. I knew that he was Chandler from Friends. Mm -hmm. So that got me curious to actually start listening to his memoir. And it's fascinating because actually he went through many things in his life that I personally had no idea about. He went through some challenges, some Uh, difficulties and and I think that that is one of the cool things about memoirs because memoirs mm -hmm. are usually about lessons the person learned yeah, yeah. from those experiences and the yeah. person is sharing those lessons. That's such a blessing that he managed to finish the book and even narrate it. Nobody knows when it can happen to you and that's such a lucky coincidence that we now have his book. Actually, about what you were saying, that the only fact you knew about him is that he was Chandler from Friends. After his death, I watched a couple of, you know, videos dedicated honoring him. They, a couple of videos actually quoted this while writing this book and while doing lots of charity. He, he liked to repeat that After his death, he doesn't want people to remember him only like Chandler from France. He wanted people to remember him for other things. Uh, and he mm -hmm. was referring to his charity that he did a lot too. By the way, Chago, let me come back and remind our viewers. Let them give them a chance to uh, learn these new exciting words you used describing this uh, book. You said captivating, gripping. And there was some third word, and all three of them mean something very good. I think they are almost synonyms in the sense that something gripping is captivating in the sense that it catches your attention. And mm -hmm. you want to keep watching it, you want to keep listening to it in this case. 
it's gripping. It gets me invested. It gets me super interested. And also, when talking about some dangerous situation, there is a very good phrase you used: near death experience or near death situation. Yeah. Yeah, a near death experience. This is actually a, what we call a compound adjective. So we have near, there is a hyphen there, and death. So we put these words together. What kind of experience was I describing? Uh, I was describing a near death experience. Mm -hmm. So it's an experience in which you almost die. Uh, so yeah, Axen, I've been really digging this uh, audiobook. I'll share more with you uh, as I progress, but it's been really eye-opening. By the way, I want to close this video by posing a question uh -huh. first to you, Xenia, and also to our viewers here. I didn't know about this, so I had to actually research about this mm -hmm. in preparation for today's uh, video. But the question is, because I just said that I've, I've been listening to Matthew Perry's memoir. Mm -hmm. Do you know the difference between a biography, an autobiography, and a memoir? Isn't it frustrating when you learn a new word or expression, but when it's time to actually use it in real life, in a real conversation, you totally forget the word? I know it can be quite frustrating. That's exactly why we created the Real Life English app, because we believe that the best way for you to solve this problem is by, as soon as you learn a new word or expression, to use it in real life conversations. But then there is the question, how do you find people to practice your speaking skills with? Well, you can find people like that, learners like you, on the Real Life English app. With the app, you can connect to anybody anywhere in the world to have a short four to eight minute conversation in English to practice your speaking skills. Also, you can listen to our Real Life English podcast and for the week's episode, you get access to a digital transcript and a few flashcards to help you memorize the words from the episode much faster. We have tons of users using the app. They are really happy about it and I really encourage you to try it for yourself. The link to the app will be in the description of the video, also in the show notes. It's free to download and try and I'm sure you will love it. So, memoir as I understand it, and I remember from the Moomin Troll characters, the book I'm reading to Mira, the daddy of the family was writing memoirs. It means that this is a story of your life written by yourself. So I'm pretty sure memoir means that. <laughs> <laughs> the next one, autobiography and biography. As there was a period in my life when I was painting, I attended the art classes, so I know that, for example, autoportrait, right, is like the portrait of yourself. So autobiography, maybe it's the same as memoir, just a similar, like, just a synonym. And then biography, maybe <laughs> that's a story of your life written by another person. Am I right? Ah, very nice. Yeah, you are so in the ballpark. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> It was fun watching you, you know, think about it and, you know, following your train of logic, your train of thought. Yeah, just because you gave me time just on the spot, I think I would also feel like a little bit confused between memoir and autobiography because, yeah, turns out they mean the same, right? Not quite. Yeah, they are very similar. And uh, let me uh, explain about this. And that's what I found surprising. So first of all, biography, yes, you are absolutely correct. So a biography is uh, a person's story written by somebody else, mm -hmm. uh, like Steve Jobs' biography, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, he authorized another person to write his biography. Usually it's a journalist or a person who knows the subject matter, the, the person. Mm -hmm. And usually for a biography to be written, that is a lot of work because it involves a lot of research and interviews, mm -hmm. maybe with friends and family, people who grew up with that person you are writing the biography about. Now, autobiography and memoir are both written by the person. So it is firsthand, first account experience. The difference is that the autobiography is a story of the person back to back, like from beginning to, let's say, mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. and. It follows a chronological order and it's more factual mm -hmm. in the sense that, okay, this happened. And then in 1965, this happened, you know, it's more like that. It's mm -hmm. a chronological okay. series of events that happen in that person's life from beginning to end. A memoir is more a collection of memories mm -hmm. that the person themselves shares, not necessarily in chronological order. Mm -hmm. Chooses to share what, she, what he wants to share, yeah? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And also, the memoir has more this quality of the person sharing how he or she felt mm -hmm. when they experienced mm -hmm. that. And also, 
any lessons learned、mm -hmm. from that experience.、Yeah. So there is that little twist, you know.、Yeah. So not necessarily does it follow a chronological order. Not necessarily does it cover the the person's entire life, but、yeah. it has this focus on feelings, on lessons learned. And memories. It even sounds like that, like autobiography. This word sounds formal, and you just said that it should follow the chronological order, all facts. So it's more formal.、Mm -hmm. Whereas memoir, it's not a fiction, but it's still like more creative piece of work. Let's say, yeah, like with lessons,、mm -hmm. teachings. <laughs> so I, I, I wasn't sure about the difference. So when I、mm -hmm. researched, I was like, oh yeah, that is interesting. Makes、yeah. perfect sense. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning the difference today between. These three words, you know, these three、um, literary、mm -hmm. styles, right?、Mm -hmm. uh, books, right? Biography, autobiography, and memoir. Basically, the show is about this man, this therapist, who has recently lost his wife, and he is a widower. When the show starts, it's been about a year since he lost his wife, and he also has a teenage daughter. So, both him and the daughter are still kind of grieving. The loss of her mother, and in his case, her wife, in a different way. 